Welcome to Citrix Tech Insight, where we provide overviews of Citrix technologies, features, and functions through technical overviews and visual walkthroughs. In this Tech Site video, our focus will be on Microsoft Teams optimization with Citrix DAS and Citrix Virtual Apps and Desktops. Chances are you are delivering some form of unified communications with DAS. The use of unified communication has exploded over the last four to five years, especially when the COVID pandemic drove work from home, remote learning, telemedicine, and so on. This demand probably won't go away, especially with economic headwinds, which will prompt more remote meetings versus in-person. So which one is the most dominant? Microsoft Teams. This is according to a survey from DAS Like a Pro's EUC State of the Union. And some more information we've seen from our own usage telemetry, there are more than 5 million daily active users for Teams on Citrix, but the same telemetry shows us that only 80% of those are in optimized mode, which is a concern. So what is Citrix's approach to optimizing Microsoft Teams? Our HDX optimization for Teams offloads the media rendering for both audio and video from the VDI host to the endpoint device. Offloading the media rendering reduces the workload on the virtualized infrastructure and improves the overall performance and scalability of Teams in the virtualized environment. Our Teams optimization is built into DAS and Citrix virtual apps and desktops and is turned on by default via Citrix policy. Let's look at the architecture and what Teams optimization looks like behind the scenes. At the top of the diagram, we have our VDA within either our data center or public cloud tenant. Below that is our user device running the Citrix workspace app. After the user launches Teams, Teams authenticates to Office 365 and tenant policies are pushed down to the Teams client and the relevant turn and signaling channel info is relayed. Teams detects it is running in a VDA and makes API calls to the Citrix code embedded in Teams. A secure WebSocket connection is open to the WebSocket service running on the VDA loopback. The WebSocket service runs as a local system account on session zero, performing TLS termination and user session mapping. The WebSocket agent now instantiates a generic virtual channel by calling into Citrix HDX browser redirection service. The HDX engine spawns a new process called hdxteams.exe, which is the WebRTC engine used for Teams. And now hdxteams.exe and Teams have a two-way virtual channel path and can start processing multimedia requests. And when the user begins the call flow, Teams communicates with the Teams services in Azure and end-to-end -end signaling path is established with the target peer. Teams will ask HDX Teams for a series of supported call parameters, codecs, resolutions, etc. This is known as SDP offer, which are then relayed via the signaling path to team services in Azure and from there to the other peer. Once SDP and ICE connectivity checks are completed, SRTP media will flow between hdxteams.exe and the other peer or Office 365 conference servers if it is a meeting. So optimizing teams seems easy enough, so what could possibly go wrong? Well, it could be an old VDA, an old workspace client. Maybe someone tweaked the HDX policy and shut Teams optimization off. Sometimes underpowered thin clients could be an issue. And even installing Teams incorrectly into the base DAS image can affect the end user experience. You'd think after all this development, all this focus, all the innovation, this issue would be solved. But we continue to hear from Citrix customers and partners that delivering Teams and other unified communication apps in DAS is one of their biggest trouble spots. And for the user, if anything goes wrong, the experience is inconsistent at best. Here's an example. With Citrix HDX optimization for Teams, you get clear, jitter-free video and clean, crisp audio. Without Citrix HDX optimization, the audio is less clear with dropouts is at a lower resolution. What you saw in the last example was the hairpin effect. What that means is that the audio visual aspect is not rendering at the endpoint. It's actually rendering on the DAS host and being pushed down the display and audio virtual channels. Now, while we have great display and audio codecs, there's a lot that can diminish the experience. Being far away with high latency or bandwidth constraints obviously affects the experience in a negative way. But think about the processing power it takes to deliver a high-definition audio-visual experience. Now, that is taking place on the server host. 
If it's a multi-session host that's loaded up, you're hitting a resource bottleneck that affects everyone negatively. So how can you as an administrator or an end user tell if you're running an HDX optimized team session? There are a couple of options that do require manual intervention. Within the Teams client, simply going to About Version displays the Teams version and if it is running in HDX optimized mode. This will be displayed in the version banner. Another option, check the endpoint to see if the HDX RTC engine process is running. There are other options available as well when troubleshooting Teams optimization and the CTX link you see here is the best resource to use in this troubleshooting. For Teams optimization to work correctly, here's what is required. Starting with Teams itself, the minimum version needed is the current version minus seven months. The delivery controller needs to be at version 1912CU7 or later. Or if you're running Citrix DAS, these customers, since the infrastructure is managed and maintained by Citrix, no versions to worry about there. For the VDAs, version 1912CU7 Plus is required as well. The requirements on the endpoint device side are as essential as well. Citrix Workspace App 2203 or newer for Windows, 2203 for Mac, 2203 for Linux, and the latest Workspace App for Chrome OS are all required. We often see that a user may connect from an old laptop with an old version of Workspace App or even receiver installed. Maybe they've even connected with an HTML5 in a browser and the expectation is an optimized experience but today that's not supported and won't be the case. In short, use the latest or later Citrix components. Teams optimization should work out of the box if all these minimum requirements are met without setting any special HDX policies. Here's another consideration. When you build your base image, you must make sure to follow a certain process. This is outlined in detail in Citrix documentation as well as Microsoft's. The big thing to consider is that by default, Teams installs into the user's app data folder in their profile. Obviously, that's not where you want it unless it's a persistent desktop. You can install Teams in machine-wide mode, which puts it into the program files section and adds itself to the program section and control panel. One other note, Teams will not auto-update itself in machine-wide mode, so you will need to add that to part of your image maintenance procedures. Another thing to consider is profile management. Even with machine-wide install, Teams will hammer the user profile. So you will want to configure your user profile management with appropriate inclusions and exclusions. And as I mentioned before, if you're running the correct VDA, workspace, and delivery controller, Teams optimization is on by default. You must actually explicitly turn it off, otherwise it's going to optimize Teams experience so long as you are on a capable device. Remember when I mentioned the issues with the underpowered thin clients? Well, our Teams optimization now includes a feature to help with this. First, some background on how Teams works. We'll look at this in very simple terms. When several attendees join a video call, each endpoint reports up their max capability, as in video resolution. The Teams platform then sets the resolution to the lowest capable client. You can see what happens. Four or five people join with high powered laptops and then someone joins in with an older underpowered device that's CPU bound. The call experience goes down for everyone. But with simulcast delivery, multiple video resolutions will become available, meaning the person on the underpowered device will get lower resolution without affecting everyone else. The feature does require your team's tenant with Microsoft to be in the appropriate ring to make sure that you have the feature enabled on their side. This demo starts with four devices in a Teams call. One of the devices is very old and very underpowered. The performance monitor of that device is highlighted and it shows both CPU and GPU are pegged. You can see how the streams from that device have slowed, are running behind, and making the call difficult for all parties involved. This is without simulcast support for Teams optimization turned on. Now we have simulcast enabled. Same exact devices. The improvement is obvious. Even though the offending device is very old and very underpowered, actually not even supported as a Citrix ready thin client, the CPU and GPU are no longer completely pegged, and the audio and video streams are able to keep up. With simulcast enabled, each client sends its AV stream in a resolution it can handle given its resources, 720p, 360p, or with very underpowered devices, 180p. 
Teams meeting servers then send out multiple streams, sending the appropriate resolution for what each participant device can handle. This will help with underpowered devices, older client devices, older thin clients, and low bandwidth situations. So now let's answer the question, what happens if you cannot run in optimized mode? Granted, we don't have optimization support for certain devices like iPads or Android mobile devices. Can you see the issue here? Maybe you're using your Linux thin client and it works great, fully optimized. But then you head to your local coffee shop, take out your iPad, put in your Apple AirPods, and connect to your dad's desktop. You open Teams, and you're in what we call fallback mode, or media over ICA. These legacy HDX technologies might be webcam redirection, and client-side audio, or microphone redirection. So the peripherals are mapped to the VDA and appear to Teams as if they were locally attached to the virtual desktop. This isn't always a bad thing. In fact, we've made some major improvements in bi-directional audio recently. Those generic or media over ICA improvements are important because some audio and video solutions don't have optimization options to offload rendering to the endpoint. So the takeaway is this. When Citrix HDX optimization for Microsoft Teams is configured correctly, Citrix is going to provide a great Teams user experience for your end users.